utilizing a common kitchen staple to create a natural dye is a great way to produce some interesting colors on fabrics, paper, and all of the things that we use in our junk journaling process. In this particular video, I've done some research on the natural dyeing process that I would like to share with you. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you a bit more about my channel. We are going to get started in a natural dyeing process by creating our own mordant out of rusty bits. I have some rusty bits here. I shall put them into this jar. I will cover them with one cup of vinegar or one part vinegar. I'm going to pour my vinegar in about one third up the way of this jar. This is just regular white vinegar. And I'll close that up, move my rusty bits around to make sure they all have that vinegar coat on them. Then I'll open that jar back up and fill it with water. Once that is closed, I'll set this aside for about a week. And when I come back, you will have iron water or your iron mordant. A mordant is just that. It's a fixative. It's a substance that's usually metallic, like I'm using rusty bits or iron here. That will help that natural dye in adhering to the natural fibers that you use in echo dyeing, like cotton, wool, or silk. That's because those are not normally color fast. The difference between a mordant and a modifier is just very simply the mordant helps it adhere. The modifiers alter that final color. They normally are applied after dyeing. We will begin by cutting an onion. The only part of this onion that we want to use are the skins. And, you know, I've asked people to save onion skins for me. Some do a great job. Some save too much of the flesh. So I thought I would just show you what part of the onion skin I utilize. So when I'm peeling the onion, I'm taking just that outer layer of that skin, almost only the dried part. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use other parts of that onion. I don't know. I am just a gal experimenting with echo dyeing, and I find that just the outer part works great for me. I don't have any issues. I'm going to save this onion wrap it up in some foil, put it in my fridge, because I'm going to use that later this evening when I'm fixing dinner. The fleshy part here I will not utilize, so I'll discard. I'll either throw it in the compost pile or, or throw it in the, in the garbage. Whatever happens, happens. But here are the onion skins that I have left. I have been saving them. Every time I peel an onion, I put them in a baggie. I keep that baggie in my refrigerator. So I always have onion skins on hand. I keep the red onions separate from the sweet onions because they will produce a different color. So now that we've established that, let's put those onions into the pot. Add some water. And I thought, you know, I'm sitting at my desk. I sh probably shouldn't add all the water here because I'll spill it on my way out. So let's go outside to the outside spot on my studio, the porch on my studio, where I have a little station set up for me to echo dye. So I have a, a little one burner here um, that I'm going to use this time, and we'll test it out and see if it gets hot enough. I normally pull out the camp gas burner, but I'm going to try to do it the easy way today. So let's fill this pot with some additional water. I'm going to turn it up to the high setting so that I can get a good rolling boil on those onion skins. 
It's it's a nice fall, wintry day. I don't know if you can see that little white speck down in the right corner of the screen, but that's the horse standing down there in the pasture. We thought since we're out here on the deck, we might as well enjoy a little bit of this nice autumn day together. So now we're back inside getting our fabrics ready. So this is just muslin, which is, you know, 100% cotton muslin. I have another cotton fabric here. And I have these flower sacks. So we're going to work with these in this, uh, in the onion skins. I also have some doilies and, and pieces of lace and other things that, that I'd like to try. But let's play with some more of these dried onions while we're letting our onion water boil. I have a bunch of dried skins that I am just going to lay out with the hope that they will mark my fabric. Now, I know when I do this with paper and I use alum as a mordant, it turns my paper a beautiful yellow color and it um, really exposes the lines in those onion skins. We're using an iron mordant today. So that is really going to darken the shade and almost give it a, a rusty, I'm thinking, a rusty appeal. Have that little string I'm going to set aside because I will use that for something. Now I have my first piece laid down and now I'm going to lay down more onion skins on top of the second piece of fabric and I'm using all natural fabrics. To echo dye you need, you can't use synthetics. It has to be cotton, wool, silk, and a natural fiber. So now we have them all laid out together and I'm trying to make a decision on do I roll them from the bottom up or do I roll it from the side? And I've decided that I will roll it from the side Shouldn't have made a whole lot of difference, right? But it seemed to be very taxing to, for me to make that decision. So now I'm rolling it from the side. And I'm trying to get it as tight as I can because I want the contact with the fabric and those onion skins to be really good and strong. And as I push some of those onion skins out, I'm just tucking them back in. And I'm going to grab a cotton string to tie this all together. Now, I will tell you, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So we are going to learn together on what happens here because this is experimentation at its, at its finest, I guess. We're, we're delving in without really knowing what our results are going to be. I'm going to get that all tied up, and I'm pulling it as tight as I can pull it, and then I'll tie it off in a square knot up here at the top just to make sure it stays together. So I think we have it pretty good. I'll twist that in half to see if I can get it down inside my jar of my iron water. I'm taking a look at that and I think that this is going to be much too big to fit in here. So I'll set that aside and, and I do use that if you saw the um, echo dyeing where we use the leaves through our hot shot. I used the iron mordant to deepen the color of those leaves. So I have this big cheese ball container that I have filled with iron mordant 
And the beauty about this container is you get to eat all those cheese balls before it's available to use. My granddaughters love these, so I always have, I have one of these when my grandkids are in town because they do really enjoy them. So let's go check on our pot. Our pot is just boiling away now. Or to be accurate, it is starting to boil. I am pulling out my fabric that has set in this iron mordant for about 30 minutes, putting it inside the steaming onion skins. I will weigh that down with this brick that I have sitting aside put the lid back on just a little off to let that steam come out and let that boil for two hours. Now I have pulled the fabric after that second hour and you can see that that mordant has really saddened or deepened that color of, of the onions, that nice yellow um, that we normally receive from, from the onion dye. I think you'll also find it very interesting what that dries to after having been rinsed and, and washed. So I'm picking all of the onion skins off and we'll get that rinsed out and, and washed. Now let's take that onion liquid or the liquid from that boil which is going to have some iron in it because we had that iron mordant in there. We also had the brick in there, so who knows what was in that. But in any event, we get this nice, clear, amber-colored liquid. And I don't think you could really see it, so I'm going to put it in this glass jar real fast just so you can see how beautiful that liquid is from those onion skins. I'm sticking my piece of muslin down in that to absorb that color. It does not have a mordant on it at all. Now, the pieces of lace do not have a mordant on it at all. I am going to assume that the iron already in the container is going to act as a mordant for me. So we'll see how that does. Now to get on to the next product out of our kitchen, I have some black beans. So I guess you can tell what we will be having for dinner this evening. We'll be have, having some black beans and rice with a little bit of onion. I'm pouring the water over my black beans, and we won't actually have it this evening because these beans I will allow to soak overnight. I always soak my beans overnight. I do that to get the I think it's called phytic acid out of them, which destroys bone. So don't, don't want to play that game. So we are letting the beans soak. They've soaked overnight right here in my studio. Taking some of that muslin, putting over the jar. I'm going to grab a rubber band and see if I can get that to tighten up a little bit so it doesn't all crumble up on me when I start to pour this water in. So let's get this rubber band adhered and filter the water off of those beans. So look at this nice color that we're getting off of the beans. It's almost a deep purple looking color. So I have that. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that muslin down in there and let that adhere to that fabric. I did not put a mordant on that muslin. So that muslin is without mordant. There is no mordant in the water that came off of those beans. So you can see the dye is really not attaching to it. But I am going to let that sit for a while in this jar and see what happens. 
Now, for the rest of the things that I want to do, I'm putting alum. You can get this alum at, I buy it in bulk. You can buy it at the grocery store in a little spice, in the spice section. And I am mixing the alum into the water. I'm just putting a couple of tablespoons of alum into this mason jar with water. Maybe a quarter cup. I don't think I use that much. It's probably about two tablespoons. Now I'm soaking that um, <clears throat> doily in that alum and water mixture, and I have a few pieces of lace I'm going to drop down in there and soak as well. Here is the black bean that it started out. I'm going to stick that back in there. I had pulled that out, and you can see the light color that it received. I'll stick it back in there and let that soak some more. Now we clean up and wait. So it's the next day. I've had some other projects going. I'm pulling my black bean with the doily to check on it. And take a look at this. It is turning this beautiful shade of lavender or purple or whatever you want to name that color. I think it's wonderful. So let's take a look at how everything turned out. Up in the left is that muslin that did not have the mordant with the black beans and of course the doily. This is the onion skin all with the alum mordant soaked in the onion skin left over from the first dye which was the iron mordant soaked fabric that went into the onion skins. So I think all in all we got some great looking pieces to utilize in a junk journal. I hope you think so as well. And I hope you'll continue to come back on Saturdays to journal with me and to create some journals and to create the components that go inside these journals. But let's set this fabric aside and next week we'll utilize it to start on our journal cover for the junk journal that we shall be making. So I shall say bye for now. Thank you for being here. Playlist is up above. Love to have your thumbs up, your comments, and by all means, please subscribe and join me in this adventure. Bye for now.